Okay, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step walkthrough of a two-tailed hypothesis test, and uh, I'm going to be using R to do the calculations, and uh, I'm working in a Jupyter notebook, all right? So uh, the first several steps are just sort of framing the problem. So uh, we're going to answer this question about the efficient market hypothesis, and it, part of it states that, uh, you know, for any stock, the expected change on a given day is zero. And, well, maybe you don't believe that. Maybe you think... Uh, that something like uh, Alphabet, formerly Google, uh, has a change that's different from zero. So how can you test this? All right, well, the first step is going to be to uh, state the null and alternative hypotheses. All right, and, uh, you know, going in, we don't have a reason to believe that uh, there's a directional bias here. We just don't think it's zero. So uh, this makes it a two-tailed test, all right? So any any deviation that's significantly far away from zero, we're going to say we're seeing an effect or basically that uh, Google's uh, stock daily price change is not zero. Okay. All right. The next thing we want to do is sort of select a level of significance. And, uh, you know, generally the, in these tests, uh, 0 0.05 is considered uh, a, a good level, a good trade-off between, well, we're rejecting too many nulls or we're rejecting too many true nulls or we're we're not rejecting enough false nulls. All right, so this is kind of a trade-off position here, okay? Uh, and then we need to sort of decide what statistical test to use. Uh, since we don't really know the standard deviation of a stock's price change, uh, we're going to use the student's T, which is going to be just a little bit harder to reject the null than under the standard normal or Z test, okay? All right, so given all that, we're going to be using a T test. We need to figure out uh, where the critical values are so that we can uh, decide when the effect we're seeing uh, is, is actually showing a, a real effect and not just random chance. Okay, so I'm going to use this. Actually, I'm going to combine them into, uh, into one variable here. Uh, I'm going to use this quantile for t. All right, and so uh, there's the left tail. All right, and then I'm going to be selecting a sample size of 30. All right, once we once we get some data. All right, so that's going to be a t-test with 29 degrees of freedom, n minus one uh, degrees of freedom. All right, so for the upper tail, all right, it's just going to be 0.975, and again, uh, 29 degrees of freedom. All right, and we'll just print those out so we can see about where we're going to be rejecting the null. Okay. All right. So a little bit over two standard deviations away from the mean. Uh, if if the if the result turns out like that, we'll say that okay, Google's uh, you know, price change is not zero, and we'll be able to sort of determine a, a direction if this is the case. All right. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and graph that just uh, just so we can sort of visualize what's going on here. Okay. And so uh, to graph it, I'm gonna actually generate a t distribution. All right, and so I'm going to use this random T, and uh, I'm going to generate 100,000 uh, random variables based on this idea of a 29 degrees uh, freedom T distribution. All right, so it's a family of distributions, and uh, the higher the degrees of freedom, sort of the narrower the distribution becomes. Okay, so we're going to plot this using ggplot. All right, I'm going to put it in a data frame. Tell it what kind of graph we want. So I'm going to use a density plot. I'm going to fill that in with sort of a light blue. And I'll put the rest uh, on another line so you can see it a little more clearly. I am going to uh, add a vertical line or two vertical lines. All right, with the x-intercept okay. based on the mean of that t-dist that I generated. And we're going to add to that the critical values. OK, 
Okay. All right. So we can see our t distribution that I that I generated. Uh, we can see where the critical values are. All right. So if the null is to be believed, all right, then we should see a t statistic that is somewhere within this range. Or right? anything beyond either of these sort of lines in the sand here, we're going to say okay, uh, we're seeing a real effect here. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and get some data. I'm going to use the the quant mod uh, module. And I'm going to get a uh, stock price for uh, uh, Alphabet's uh, symbol. All right, so it's Google. Okay, and all this thing really needs is, is the symbol, but it'll get more data than I really want. I just want like the last year or so. So I'll specify a few other things. Uh, we'll get the data from uh, Yahoo, I guess. And then a from date. Once we get the data, we'll sort of take a look at it, make sure it makes sense. Okay, so this is how it comes back from uh, Yahoo. All right, so uh, we can see that yes, it did start. It must have been the 4th of January was the first trading day in 2016. And uh, we have lots of uh, price data here. What we really want to do though is calculate the uh, daily change. So that's close to close. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean up the data. All right, and so I'm just clean it up here. Okay, so the returns are going to be the log change. Okay, I'm going to leave off the first row. Okay, and then I'm just going to go ahead and sample the data. All right, I'm going to take a simple random sample here, and we will sample the Google returns. Okay, so we can see uh, uh, where our data is coming from. All right, and uh, just the first few rows here, and uh, yeah, coming from various uh, random dates throughout the uh, throughout the data set. Okay. All right. So we're ready now to go ahead and conduct our test. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do, I guess, is calculate it manually. All right. And I'm going to store the calculation in a variable called tstat. Okay. And uh, basically, right, t is going to be equal to the x bar, the mean of the sample, minus the, uh, the mean under the null, the mean of the population. Okay. And uh, in this case, it's zero, all right, but, uh, you know, obviously in, in a lot of tests, it's not zero. Uh, but effectively, this makes the calculation, uh, the mean of our sample, all right, and then divide it by the standard error, all right, which is, right, the standard deviation. Right, over the square root of n, 30 in this case. All right, and so we'll display that. All right, so we get a positive t, 1.566. I'm going to sort of hold off on interpreting that um, and uh, just show you this built-in t dot test function that's in, uh, in R, and uh, it just needs the data. All right, and it needs you to tell it 
what kind of uh, alternative hypothesis there is. All right, so one-tailed, two-tailed. And then uh, it wants to know the, the population mean. Okay, and so when I do this, all right, yes, the first time you run it, you may get this, uh, this message. Uh, I, I can alleviate that actually by telling it to be a vector. Okay, and then, um, okay, so we see I get the same result. All right, so there's my T, so calculate it the same way. Uh, we get a few other things here, though, out of the T-test, and actually, you know, if I store this in a variable, I can access each, each part of this uh, if I need to for some other, uh, some other analysis that I'm running, all right? Okay, so uh, essentially then uh, we have a t-statistic, we also have a p-value, so both, both things can be used to evaluate the, you know, the validity of our uh, alternative hypothesis. Okay, so I've sort of set this up a little bit in advance, and uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, sort of plot this so we can see visually what's going on, okay? And so, uh, as in before, right, I plotted the t distribution, I plotted uh, the critical values, and now I've plotted the t statistic. All right, we can see that it's inside the range that I said before would, uh, would, would just sort of lead us to believe that, you know, we don't have enough evidence to reject the null. So we're not really saying the null is true, we're just saying we don't have enough evidence to reject it, that there's a good chance that this t statistic is is just by random chance because of the sample because of other conditions uh, that we're just seeing a t statistic out here it's not enough to say that the the change in Google is bigger than zero okay and uh, that also uh, corresponds with this p value basically saying there's a there's almost a 13 percent chance that we saw this t statistic from purely random chance all right and if we reject the null, there's about a 13% chance that we shouldn't do that. So a little bit more than 1 in 10 chance of, of being wrong if we reject the null here. All right. And, you know, if you run this again, right, if I run this cell up here again, get a new sample, all right, and, and then sort of run down through here, I, I will undoubtedly get another T statistic. You can run it several times and see if you can uh, ever reject the null. Okay. All right, so basically then the last step is uh, we have to draw a conclusion. What's this mean with respect to the null? Uh, there's not enough evidence to say that the daily price change of Google is not zero. Okay, so I hope that helps with a two-tailed hypothesis test.